Well, preparations have been made for our final Super Sport Super Stock 600 race of the day, of the weekend really here at NJMP. It's a championship of New Jersey presented by k and Filters. And these riders right here, the top three in Super Sport, are all set for battle. I know Valentin DeBees on his M4X star Suzuki was just looking to do whatever he could to get that motorcycle working and close the gap. Unfortunately, earlier on today, we had a red flag during practice. Caroline Olson went down hard in turn number one. We hear she's going to be OK. That didn't give us an exact picture of who made what adjustments overnight to try to chase this guy down. Everybody's going after Garrett Gerloff. Let's take a look at the Dunlop starting grid. Is Garrett Gerloff on pole at a 122.5? Then Valentin Bees, JD Beach, Benny Solis starting row number two with Michael Gilbert. There's the first of our Super Stock 600. And Anthony Maziato, local rider, he led early yesterday. Yes, he did. And moving back to row three, we're looking at Nick McFadden, Shane Richardson, all the way from New Zealand. Um, you know, these guys are coming from all over. We've got Brandon Ord from Canada, Jody Berry, another American kid, Connor Blevins rounding out row four. Connor Blevins looking to get back on the podium as well as he's locked in that championship battle in Super Stock 600. And as we move back through the grid here, going to row number five, it's Aguilar, Daytona Anderson, Davis, Silva, Giannato, and Brandon Cleland. Keep in mind, those blue numbers indicate that they are in the Super Sport class. These yellow numbers indicate they're in Super Stock 600. So we have two things going on at one time. Jake, of course, it's that battle on the racetrack, but also the battle with inside the championship. We'll be talking about that as we scroll on through to the last bit. Ten rows of riders taking the grid here. Yeah, you know, and we're talking about that 600 Super Stock battle. You've got Aguilera all the way on the fifth row. Gilbert's yeah. on the second row. That's a big disadvantage. A huge disadvantage when we talk about the different championships and of course we're talking about it because this is the penultimate round and this is only three races left championship Derek Gerloff is leading J.D. Beach by 41 and Valentin DeBee is 105 back so in the Super Sport Championship only Derek Gerloff and J.D. Beach have the possibility to wrap up the title in the Super Stock 600 it's been five points to Jay Stagger and Michael Gilbert and when we concluded the day yesterday by the way Jake um, this was the closest championship, not anymore. KTM now has two tied up top plus one point. Yeah, KTM races are coming down to the wire for sure, but, you know, five points, that's nothing. Um, first to second place is a five-point spread, yep. so that could easily be made up today. All right, let's take a look at Jake Zemke's Kawasaki keys to the race. First key is, hey, can anyone challenge Gerlach? It's a big one. The, the guy's been on fire lately, running away at the front. You know, can J.D. Beach? Valentine the Beast or Benny Solis step up to the challenge and, and challenge him for a race win. Second one is the uh, championship in 600 Superstock, like we're talking about. It's only five points. These guys have three races today, next weekend at Barber Motorsports Park. So it's really coming down to who's beating who. Look, going to our third one. Hey, my prediction right now? Yeah. Can Richardson get his breakthrough win? He's the only guy in the top seven in points in Superstock who hasn't won a race yet. The kid's fresh here from New Zealand. It's his first time here, first time in the States, first time racing the series, and he's been doing extremely well this year. I've been really impressed. Yep, Shane Richardson on the 26th on the Palmetto Motorsports Team New Zealand motorcycle Kawasaki. Can he work his way up front? He hasn't had the best weekend here. He's been down a couple times, but he says he's shaking all that off, and he thinks he has a good chance today. So here we go. It's getting ready to start. Race number two of the Super Sport Super Stock 600. That red light goes on. And it's off and we're off and racing. A good launch by the number one. That's not what J.D. Beach wanted to see, but it's a long way to turn one. Oh, they're side by side, oh. dragging it in there. J.D., nope, gets pinched off again, so it's Gerlach Holy. Yeah, we got Benny Solis up there in third, and then the uh, two young four Suzuki's right there in fourth and fifth, looking like Valentine DeBeast and Nick McFadden. So McFadden up in the mix, so leading our Super Stock 600 battle is Nick McFadden on that M4. Medage Suzuki, Owensboro, Kentucky driver. Got his uh, younger brother here today. So a good start for our Nick McFadden, who's been pretty close all year. Here's a big the move. Oh man, that was deep on the brakes, and he, he doesn't want to let those lead two get away. Benny Solis, can he fight back? No, so Valentin DeBees had to make quick work of Benny Solis, who's been really riding the wheels off that Honda CBR 600 RR all year long with four podium appearances. So far this 
season for Solis. He's got a lot of work ahead of him as Valentin DeBees didn't quite get the start he wanted, but he's got to go catch those Monster Energy Yamalu YES Grand Yamahas right now, or it's got to be problems for the M4X R Suzuki ride. Yeah, definitely, Greg. And what we're seeing right now is something we didn't see in the last couple races. JD is right on Garrett's tail on this first lap. This is really what he needed to do. Garrett's been pulling out a half second to second on the first lap of the last three races. Here comes JD. He's out of the draft. He's going up the inside. JD beats. No, nope, he won't do it this time. So, but he is awfully. The key thing to watch with JD beats right now is going to be if he can stay here for about five laps after that five lap mark. What's his tires going to do? These riders have two big, two massively different riding styles. J.D. Beach likes to get that dirt track style and that rear end out sideways where Garrett likes to keep those wheels in the line. Yeah, definitely. You know, J.D.'s more of a point-and-shoot type rider. Garrett, he, he keeps the wheels in line, a lot of corner speed, like you said, Greg, and uh, it, it, it's two contrasting styles, but right now they're pretty equal on the racetrack. And let me tell you, talking to J.D. Beach earlier this week, or, or, you know, oh, we got a rider down. It's the 777. Uh, 777, seven, 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 seven. that's Josh Picard out of Canada on the Team MG55. So teammates to Michael Gilbert. When I saw that bike for a moment, I thought, oh, no, Gilbert. But he's good, so Picard down on this one. Race action continues. Yeah, and, and as I was saying, J.D. Beach, Friday, Saturday, every time I've talked to him, he, he, he's upbeat, he's excited. He really felt like he was going to have what it takes to challenge this weekend. And, you know, we didn't see it yesterday, but, boy, he's coming out swinging today. Look at J.D. Beach. We saw Garrett Gerloff in the last several races just check out. I mean, he's on a six-win race, race win streak right JD's now. J.D.'s up the inside. Yeah. Oh, boy, those boys are having fun right now. That's the one thing Gerloff has been working on is just the feel he has under braking. He knows that if he gives that away to J.D. Beach, the way that J.D. rides, the point-and-shoot style, like you mentioned, Jake, it disrupts the flow that Garrett Gerloff has and the rhythm he has with his Yamaha R6. Yeah, for sure. I mean, with those contrasting styles, Garrett will generally carry a little bit more speed at the apex. So if J.D.'s in front, it would definitely disrupt his, his flow and how he wants to go through the corner. Whereas when J.D.'s behind a bit, it disrupts him a little bit more because he wants to carry more speed in on the brakes. And then he's a little slower in the corner. Now we're looking at Valentine DeBees and Benny Solis. Benny's definitely hanging a lot stronger than he did yesterday. Yesterday, he was a very lonely fourth place. And uh, right now, it looks like he's keeping Valentine in his sights. And by the way, Benny Solis has just done a 22-8. His qualifying time is at 24-3. So they've definitely found something in the setup that CBR 600 RR. Hollywood, California native Benny Solis carrying the flag for Honda in this one with Caroline Olsen. His teammate out is the only Honda in the field. Yeah, you know, he's definitely found a, a made a big step from yesterday to today. Um, I know we've been talking about the front end of his motorcycle a little bit and that they were trying to make some improvements there and it, it definitely they, they accomplished their goal. Last time by Garrett Gerloff sets the fastest lap of the race at 22 flat. 22.5 was his pole time. So 22 flat for Garrett Gerloff. And J.D. Beach answered with a 22.2. So that's the best time that we've seen from J.D. Beach as well. He starts to get back. But man, that's two tenths of a second right now. You can see it when push comes to shove. Gerloff has it. A 22.8 and 22.8 last time by for Valentin DeBees and Benny Solis. Nick McFadden leading the super stock battle ahead of Anthony Mazziato, Mike Selfie on the 114, who actually did start the race, is in seventh place ahead of Shane Richardson, Connor Blevins, Bray York, where's Gil all the way back in 12th, he's battling with Jason Aguilar. Yeah, he's definitely down, down the charts right now. We'll see if he can claw his way back and uh, get back going. That's, that's not where he wants to be for this championship, you know. He needs to be right there, but, you know, those guys are still the, the 12th and 13th. They're, they're right together on the racetrack, so the championship is still very, very close. But hey, look at my guy Shane Richardson. What about that <laughs> right now? He's up in third. So Shane Richardson, third in Superstock Battles. We continue to watch J.D. Beach massive improvements. We have not seen anyone this close to Garrett Gerloff in quite some time. Here comes J.D. J.D. with a good little drive out of there. Oh, but Garrett on the brakes, man. He's, he's getting into one awfully deep. Gets into one deep, and he gets that motorcycle turn. And Jake, we've talked about this since Dunlop brought out that new rear tire. It's a 180 profile tire, 180 compared to a 200. And ever since that's gone on, J. 
Derek Gerlach's motorcycle, he has just found another level, another gear. Yeah, for sure. You know, the, the 180, the new tire, the, the shape of the tire would tend to suit itself better for Garrett's riding style as opposed to JD's. Um, but, you know, I think Garrett adjusted to that tire a lot quicker than JD did, but it looks like JD's brought his way back. And uh, he's hanging right there. And the lap times they're running today, boy, they're, they're setting the pace. And it's fast. And it's, it, yeah, I don't know. Last time by, JD was quickest. So JD has gone his fastest lap last time by a 22-1. Compared to Garrett's 122 flat set a lap ago. So JD, you know, by the start finish line where we get our timing and scoring loop with two tenths of a second quicker than Gerlach. So again, though, the question becomes is with the setup, with the improvements that they've made, we're at lap five now. And this is where we've heard that the tire performance starts to drop off a little bit. It drops off a little bit as you expect from brand new tires and then kind of flattens out. JD Beach again. Have a little look, you know, he wasn't quite close enough to that camera angle, I think, it's a little deceiving. Side by side, we've got Solis and DeBeast. These guys are going at it. We've got great battles for first and second and third and fourth. This would be awesome. This is what we've talked about with Benny Solis. Benny Solis has had four podiums so far this season. The first two podiums he's had were DNF by Valentin DeBeast. His third podium, Valentin only scored two points. He was in 14th. And then the fourth podium was a DNF by Valentin Dubis. So when you look at the top four in Super Sport, Benny Sleeves told me he wants to race his way to a podium. He doesn't want to be gifted by one of these guys falling out. He wants to race his way onto it. And right now, he is locked in a fierce battle. A lot of racing left to go in this one. Can Solis make a move on Valentin Dubis at the end and get his third place finish, his fifth of the season? It's yeah. going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Valentin's a hard racer. Yes, he is. We, we've watched Valentin all this year and last year, and he's a very tough racer. The guy who goes extremely deep on the brakes and uh, riding the wheels off that M4 Suzuki, that's for sure. But, boy, Benny's hanging right there with him. I think we're going to watch some great battles all the way to the end. This is quite an impressive ride from J.D. Duke. You would have been saying this one year ago when J.D. was on an eight-race win streak. But this is where J.D. Beach is most dangerous. If he can stay with Garrett Gerloff, if he can match these laps. Now, J.D., you know, Jake, when riders ride together like this, you could say, okay, you know, J.D.'s learning a bit from, you know, from Garrett or whatever. But I think in an instance like this, the riding styles are so different. I don't think J.D. is learning anything other than where am I gonna where am I gonna make a pass? How am I gonna make a pass? Because you know you know at some point if he's this close and we get to one lap to go, Beach is gonna throw some out. Yeah, we're working lap 7 and 20 right now. We have only a couple more laps, we'll be at halfway and and right now JD looks the most comfortable I've seen him. Um, going all the way back to Miller Motorsports Park. And yep. that's actually when that new tire was introduced. And starting then, when JD was close at Miller, you could tell it looked like he was just clawing his way and barely holding on to Garrett. Whereas right now, he looks very comfortable and relaxed uh, right behind Garrett. And if I'm going to predict a pass, I'm going to say it's going to be right here at the end of turn one. JD's getting a great drive off this last corner. Um, I think he's just <laughs> going to sit there for a little bit. But if I'm a betting man, yeah. I bet JD makes the move right as they get to lap traffic. Saying that, I got that strategy. The one thing we know about JD Beach is the dude can race. He can go fast, but he's just got a race craft that he's shown us over and over and over again the last couple of years. In the draft, he pulls out, he's up the inside, just kind of letting Garrett know he's there. Now you have to think with Garrett on the brakes going into turn number one, he gets two or three bike lengths as he keeps doing that. So JD is doing what he needs to do. He's He's got his own rhythm. It's not like he's trying to figure out his rhythm in the turn number one. Here we go. This is the battle for fifth place. It's Anthony Mazziato on the 516. Mike Selfie on the 114. Nick McFadden back there in the 16. So Selfie having a good run at it after yesterday's disaster. And he's right now wedged himself in between two riders locked in that super stock 600 win. Yeah, um, for, you know, sure. the, the, for the lead, yeah. Selfie is, is on a super sport bike. And uh, you can tell the difference between the number plates. The guys on the super stocks have the red number plate backgrounds. And uh, right now it's giving Maziato a little bit of breathing room over Nick McFadden. Uh, it's like we got Richardson and Connor Blevins right behind him. So Selfie on the 114 out of West Orange, New Jersey on the Mike Selfie Racing Yamaha R6. Right behind him, the 16 of Nick McFadden on the M4 Med H Suzuki. That's a GSX R600. And then right behind him, 
He's got a couple of talented motorcycle races. Jane Richardson, Connor Blevins in the mix. Yeah, and right behind that, another second and a half back is Michael Gilbert, who's actually going about uh, almost a half a second quicker than these guys. So, you know, a, a podium's definitely not out of the uh, question for Michael Gilbert. And then looking at the timing and scoring screens right now, it uh, looks like Jason Aguilar is in 13th overall, and he's falling back behind Jody Berry, Braid North. So Gilbert has now put another point or two between himself. But when you get this deep in the field, as Maziato leads Super Stock 600, then it's McFadden, then it's Richardson, Blevins, Gilbert. So Gilbert right now sitting on that pile of points, but it's only one to two points difference. He needs to get on this back of this group and get a few more points. Back up front, the situation remains the same. Garrett Gerloff leading the way. Last time by 22-4. JD Beach 22-5. So lap times have barely dropped off. A couple tenths of a second. Yeah, these guys are being very consistent. You know, they both look very comfortable right now. Garrett's riding a great, great race, setting the pace. JD looks like he's just hanging there, like he's just going to wait. He looks like he's playing the way. You don't, you don't think there's any desperation in some corners with JD beats? I'm not saying there is. I'm just saying from your expert eye, looking at it, you think he really just looks comfy, or you think he's just holding on? I think he looks comfy. I think he looks comfy right now. And uh, you know what? Gerloff is. Ger Gerloff's comfy. He likes leading the race. Yeah. He likes having that clear track in front of him, much like Josh Hayes. You know? yeah. Having that clear track, doing his thing, running his lines. I, I think he's very comfortable being there right now. And, and Garrett's, like I said, he's been riding amazing. He, oh, we've got a pass. Looks like Benny Solis looking up the inside of Valentin. He's going to do it this lap. Sideways goes. There he goes. The Honda. To Benny gets, Solis. Good job. Yeah, it's good to see these two battling. Like you said, Benny's actually battling for the podium this weekend instead of having someone drop out and having it gifted to him. And he's riding the wheels off that Honda. Benny Solis Jr. on the 35. Pound Adventures on a CBR 600 RR. Talked about his teammate, Carolyn Olson. Nolan Valentine, he's going to be looking to come back right away. I don't That's what he usually does. <laughs> he doesn't. Usually what Valentine's able to do is to get within striking distance immediately. Yeah. If this is the first time like that he's gotten by, though, and he's got to go to school and try to figure out where Benny's a little stronger and where there might be some openings. For sure. And for, for you folks at home, one thing to think about, too, is the fact that Valentin and Benny have not raced together a whole lot. So, you know, through, through last year and in the early part of this season, Valentin had been racing a little bit more up front, maybe with JD, maybe with Garrett. He hasn't seen a whole lot of Benny, so he's probably not quite sure what to expect. Benny Solis. Getting the power to the ground, you can see a lot of muscle in the transition. Onto the front straightaway. This is a very fast section of this racetrack, turn number 12. And this is where we see the legs of that M4X star Suzuki. In the draft goes Valentin to Bees on brakes, and he gets it in there nice and deep. You can see the motorcycle snapping around when the rear wheel got off the ground a little bit, got light, but he'll make that move, and back into third he goes. He's yeah. one lap to take a look at where Benny's strong, so. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, like we talked about on the track map, the Kawasaki track map, turn one, it's the most classic place for passing on this on this racetrack. The guys, depending on, on which bike they're on, they're either dropping three or four gears going in that corner, going from sixth to third or sixth to second. Benny Solis missed the battle for fourth. The battle up front, Gerloff and Beach. The difference is now a half a second between those two riders. So JD lost three tenths last time by. Yeah, and I think that gap's gonna grow, Greg. Uh, we didn't see it on our screen, but I looked out the window here and uh, going into turn one, JD, Garrett got by a lap rider and JD got hung up behind him. We'll see what that time looks like when they come around this next lap. And our super stock battle starting to sort itself out. You see left-hand part of your screen, the Blevins just went up. So you're looking at Maziato, McFadden, Shane Richardson, and Blevins all locked in for that number one spot in Superstock 600 and that battle for fifth as we are looking at this battle for third. The final step on the podium. Now Valentin DeBees on that M4X star Suzuki had a little bit of some miscues there, kind of the mid part of the season. But in the last three races, he's finished second each time and that means somebody had to finish third. It was JD B. So JD trying to get out of this third place slump at the moment. And Valentin DeBees Trying to just hold on to the podium is, yep. I mean, what an impressive ride by Benny Solis. If you look at his last times, his best time of 22.8, now they're circulating the 23.7 range. Yeah, and you can see they're just coming up on a lap rider, and both of them got by clean. 
you know, I think Benny's going to hang there. You know, it looks like that those guys, their speed is fairly close. I think we're going to see these guys take it all the way down to the wire. Last time by the stripe for the leaders, it's now grown to 1.2 seconds. So it might be the case where Garrett Gerloff, let's take a look at a replay here. Jake Zemke. Yeah, you watch the slow-mo replay. You can watch him come through the very, very fast last corner. You can see those, you can see the suspension moving just a bit as this track, you know, was brand new in 2008. The more we raced on it, they do also run cars, motorcycles. There's a lot of events here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Oh, and the track continues to get little bumps and ripples in it, and they grow over time. Every year they come back, they're a little bit more pronounced. Can't even imagine with the development in Dunlop tires over the years and how refined these motorcycles are. With new asphalt at New Jersey Motorsports Park, lap times, track records would fall in a hurry. A lot of riders talk about just the, the age grip, meaning 10 years on this track surface and that front end feel. And for a rider like Valentin DeBees, for him, especially with his Suzuki GSX-R600, not being of the latest and greatest technology, he needs that front end feel. This is the battle for fifth spot. Look at the... Oh. The, oh, now, Michael Gilbert is starting to work his way back up there. He is. He got by uh, Braden North that lap. And you know that he's, like you said, he's clawing his way back. I'm not sure what happened in those early laps, but he's definitely uh, making his charge back towards the podium. We're looking at Shane Richardson right now. Uh, you know, that was my guy. That was my prediction. And this race is not over. Man, right? Still have eight he, to go. Yeah. That he, close. He's right there. He's still in third place, but he's definitely going to have to step it up if he wants to get up there with McFadden and Maggiato for the win. What we saw in Super Stock 600 early on in the year was just a, a, a slew of doubles. The year started off with Nick McFadden going double in our first round, and then Michael Gilbert, and then Connor Blevin. So, yeah, we're taking a look here at uh, Garrett. You can see that gap back to JD now, and, and he is coming up on some more lap drivers. You know, it, are they going to help him? Are they going to hurt him? That's always the question when you pull up on those lap drivers. You know, Moto America. The marshals, they do use blue flags to signal riders that are going to be overtaken and getting lapped. Some of them uh, see those flags and some of them don't. I mean, Jake, when you're, you've been in both positions. You've ridden in races, but you've been to Garrett Gerloff. Oh, look at that. Nice explosive lap traffic. You've been to Garrett Gerloff, right? You've also been to J.D. Beach role. You have 26 wins in your career, over 100 podiums in AMA competition. If you're Garrett Gerloff, man, what is your mindset day to day when you know you're on top of it? I mean, he's told us it's not a foregone conclusion, and I understand that. This is racing. Anything can happen. But he just seems like when it's time to elevate, he can just dig deep into his back pocket and just pull out another laptop. Yeah, you know, like I said, Garrett's riding a wave of confidence right now. And, uh, you know, we, we saw the same thing with J.D. Beach last year. Uh, it goes, goes back and forth. And sometimes, as a rider, when everything's working out and everything's going your way, sometimes it feels like that, like you can do no wrong. It doesn't matter. You show up with that confidence knowing that you're going to win the race no matter what. And, um, you know, it's not a foregone conclusion because he knows he has tough competitors out there, such as J.D. Beach and John Tim DeBeast and Benny Solis. These guys are really tough, but right now he's riding that wave feeling that if he's at 100%, he can go out there and win. And, you know, we saw J.D., he's clawing his way back, and today he's showing speed that he could match Garrett's speed, that he looked comfortable there, and, you know, lap traffic was definitely uh, playing a part in this race. Well, it looks like Benny Solis may have tried to get away from Valentin to be a little bit too early, show him a little bit too much too early, as Benny Solis got around Valentin to for a moment. Valentin got back around him now. He's starting to check out. He did get through some lap traffic, and it may have been a position where Benny caught some traffic in some bad spots. There's a nice wheelie coming up over that hill. But the M4X star Suzuki rider does not want to give up his streak of podium finishes. Not to Benny Solis, not today. Six laps to go in this one, a little bit less than that. And J.D. Beach mentioned that uh, Jake that he's not given up. Last time by, he had the fastest sector split of the race, but he couldn't back that up. And this is what happens when you get into some lap traffic. You've got to be, well, rider out in the dirt. That might be a little bit of a distraction. So one rider out in the weeds. But no problem from Valentin to these. M4X star Suzuki rider, 12 seconds back from our leaders, Garrett Gerlach, just crossed the line, and he is he has extended his lead now to 2.3 seconds over J.D. Peake. 
comes the bees onto the front straightaway. He'll grab a tear off. That is for better vision. You can see it flying in the background. Yeah, for folks at home, tear off. It's a, it's a very a thin piece of. I don't even know what it's called. It's mylar. Mylar, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. mylar plastic. But um, basically, you get bugs. You get a little bit of debris on, on, on your face shield. You just reach up, pull that tear off. Some riders run one. Some riders run two. Uh, that's usually about maximum. And, you know, it gives you that clear vision. And when it's clear, it's like, oh, wow, it's nice. It's like when you're driving down the highway and you, 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 know, you squirt your windshield wipers a little bit and clean off the windshield. It looks a lot better. Yeah. So Garrett Gerloff has knifed his way through some lap traffic. And J.D. Beach caught in a very interesting spot as he's trying to get around the last bits of these riders to get after his teammate. There he goes. Goes around the outside. Now keep in mind, these riders are racing their own race. There are blue flags. That riders that are getting lapped will see. But the real question Jay comes to if you a lap traffic, when do you roll off? Because if you're in your own battle with someone and you roll off and then someone decides, oh look, I'm gonna take advantage of this, that can be a little bit of uh, sportsmanship. Oh, see? JD Beach right there on Still acceleration. Pushing. He's pushing. Still but pushing. Looks like some rear grip might be going away from JD Beach. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it's it's that time in the race. There's only four laps to go. Uh, tires have usually kind of taken a little bit of a drop here from when they were new, and so the, the grip's not quite as much as it was when you started the race. And, you know, for JD, he's still going to push. He's going to continue to push right till the very end. And, you know, although the, the gap is three seconds now, you never know what can happen. And, and so he'll keep his head down the rest of this race. Not to mention one of the things JD likes to do, if he knows he's in this position, is he's going to ride as hard as he can to bring data back to his team so they can make even more improvements by the time they get to Barber Motorsports Park. Garrett Gerloff, Monster Energy Yamalu YES Graves Yamaha on a massive win streak right now is setting himself up for another potential win in this class and would extend his points lead from 41 to 45 heading into the final two rounds. I'm sorry, from 41 to 46, Jake. And in that particular case, we only have 50 points left. So Garrett Gerloff wouldn't necessarily not win a championship. And that's one thing J.D. Beach wanted to make sure. Yeah, definitely. You know, or you, you want to do everything you can to make that guy work as hard as possible because you never know what's going to happen. You never know. And here's the thing. If J.D. had let Valentin DeBees or Benny Solis get ahead of him, it would have been nine points the difference from first place to third place. That would have been 50. And on race wins alone for the year, with how many race wins Garrett Gerloff has, which if he wins this one, it'll extend it to 10. JD's only had four. Even with the points tied, he would have wrapped up that championship. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, you never know what could happen. And uh, as a racer, you, you always go out and give 100%. And, you know, it, you never wish bad luck on anybody, but, but sometimes you wish you'd get a little good luck yourself. And it, we can't can't even keep talking about how good Derek Gerloff is riding right now. Yeah. You know, it, it's so solid. Even through traffic, his lap times are, are, are only varying by a couple tenths of a second. And, um, you know, it, it's really phenomenal and it's something special to watch right now. This rider, M4XR Suzuki's Valentin DeBees here from France, his second season. He's having a good go at it as well. Benny Solis was there early on. When he goes back to see his pops, Benny Solis Sr., they're going to look at those timing and scoring sheets and say, we've definitely made some leap forward. The question is always, Jake, as you know, if you have a bike that can do a fast lap time, how do you get it set up in the time that we have allotted, Friday, Saturday, you know, qualifying and so on, to get it to do that time for a long period of time? Two laps to go. Well, yeah, Greg, you know, as a rider, hopefully, Hopefully you find the setup early in the weekend that you're actually comfortable with, right? Comfortable like, like this guy. Exactly. Comfortable doing a fast lap. Because once you can do that, you can go out and try to do a, do a race simulation. And by that, we mean going out. If the race is 20 laps, you're going to go and try and put 20 laps on those tires to find out exactly what they're going to do come the end of the race. And, and even if you don't have enough time to do it all at once, a lot of times you can start your second practice session on, say, a 10-lap old tire, put another 10 laps on it, just to try and get that idea of what's this bike going to feel like when we get towards the end of that race. Man, that's really important to have a good setup at the beginning of the race. Look, Anthony Maziato. Yep, Maziato. Anthony Maziato in fifth Still place leading. overall, leading the Super Stock 600 battle. And he's doing a fine style. And Michael Gilbert and Braden Ord are fighting it out. And Gilbert has worked his way up into third position. 
So that's a podium spot for Gilbert. And with the way Jason Aguilar is racing right now, back in 10th spot, and a couple places behind in the Superstock battle, there's a possibility that Gilbert's going to be leading this championship when we head to Barber. But Anthony Maziato. Yeah, we're looking at Maziato, and he's, you know, got a, we're on the last lap here with uh, Garrett Gerloff leading, taking that flag. He's got a, that, that gap continues to grow back to JD. It's up to 3.4. But going back, talking about Maziato, here's a guy who hasn't raced the whole series this yep. year. You know, he's, he's only made a couple appearances here and there. They didn't have the budget to do the whole season. So he's going to make the best of the opportunity he has right now. If Maziato can hold on, it would be his second win. Also, two second place finishes and a podium. Young rider coming from the KTM RC Cup was locked in a battle for that national championship last year with Brandon Posh, who's also a local rider, but isn't here this weekend. He's off racing in the British Superbike Series. So, the local riders, Anthony Maziato carrying the flag, but for this Texan, Garrett Gerloff. On the Monster Energy Yamalu YES Graves Yamaha, it has been his second half of the season. Last year, he was going for his first national title. Carrying that number one plate meant so much to him this year. You could tell that the way J.D. Beach was racing, they had found something in the setup towards the end of that season, and Gerloff was a little bit snug in championship mode. Now, he understands how it all works, what his expectation is with the number one plate, and he is proving to the world that he deserves a superbike ride or a ride in Europe. Garrett Gerloff will take the win in race two here in Super Sport Superstock 600. On the final and coming across the line, J.D. Beach as we await the rest of the racers. They lapped all the way up to 15th spot. Watching Valentine come through that last corner, you know, another podium for him. That's a great job for the M4 Suzuki team. Yeah, and he had to fight for it. Benny Solis now coming across. So Solis will, oh, he almost got caught by. No, those were lap riders. No, those were lap riders. Here's looking... Superstock 600 leader. It's the 516 of Anthony Maziato. So Maziato at his home track here in New Jersey, working on the final corner. And he has had a spectacular race. Anthony Maziato on the 516 on that YCRS Maziato Racing Yamaha will take victory in Superstock 600. And it's Nick McFadden and Braden Ort got around Michael Gilbert on that last lap. Oh, and Jason Aguilar worked his way up to ninth. So not a huge points swing as we thought in Superstock 600. It'll close up the championship, but only by about a point. Yeah, and great job by Aguilera there at the end. You know, I, I looked up a couple laps ago and he was down in 11th, 12th place. So, you know, he really stepped it up those last couple laps to minimize that points gap. Wheel in the air for your race winner, Garrett Gerloff. We'll take another one, his 10th win of the season and his seventh in a row, Jake. Yeah, phenomenal ride by Garrett Gerloff. You know, the guy did not put a wheel wrong all day. Actually, all weekend for that matter. Yeah, really. You know, yesterday's race too. Very two commanding performances, but you know, what about J.D. Beach? He definitely brought a little bit more to the table today than he did yesterday. He was able to keep Garrett honest for the for the good first half of that race, and uh, I think we're going to have an exciting race going into Barber. Yeah, I don't I don't doubt that. I think that uh, J.D. Beach and his crew are starting to figure something out. You know that that J.D. Beach attitude, it always plays well. Just keep on working, keep on chipping away. It's his style. So Garrett Gerloff will win the second race here at New Jersey Motorsports Park by 3.6 seconds over J.D. Beach. We're going to take a break on BN Sports. When we come back, we're going to go to Winter Circle and find out how it went for Garrett Gerloff. Welcome back to New Jersey Motorsports Park, the Moto America Road Race Championship. As we have wrapped up our second race for Super Sport Superstock 600. Let's take a look at some celebration here from Garrett Gerloff. He was really pumped, Jake. I he, mean, I, I, I've seen him win some races, but that one in particular, he's really excited about it. Yeah, watching Garrett lately, it seems like uh, 
he's really enjoying life in general. Yeah. <laughs> he, he is definitely enjoying life. He's bombing around the U.S., doesn't have many miles, but he's enjoying it. All right, well, let's get down to Hannah, who has our race winner, Garrett Gerlach. Garrett, J.D. was putting a lot of pressure on you there toward the beginning of the race. <laughs> You know, how is that different from the last couple of races for you? Does that affect your concentration? No, I mean, I'm expecting a race every time I go out there. So when it happens, it's, it's exciting and it's fun. And, and uh, yeah, it was, man, turn one was this place, but I wasn't going to let him pass me, that's for sure. Like, I wanted to run my own race and be out front and lead. And, and um, you know, once we started going through traffic, I kind of started noticing the gaps. I'm not really sure if he got held up a little bit, but um, just pumped to be back on top of the podium. Uh, and, yeah, like I said, J.D. was keeping me honest. Way tougher today. I had to be way more consistent and, and uh, really like watch the tires the whole race. They uh, were getting uh, a little bit uh, hairy at the end, so just trying to maintain the pace and keep the throttle steady. But big thanks to my whole team and, and uh, everybody, all these guys just working so hard. Um, thank you to everybody that supports me, Joey Hillman's, Cortec Leathers, CD Boots, keeping me safe all year. And uh, just got, I can't thank everybody enough. Like, it feels awesome to be up here another time. I was hoping that uh, maybe I could wrap up the championship here, but um, on to Barber. That's uh, another fun track of mine and kind of where I started my whole racing career. So it'll be pretty special to go back there and uh, try to fight for that championship. Can't wait. Well, congratulations. Greg, Jake, can you hear those fans up there? Oh, yeah. Oh, we hear them cheering for them. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? What a performance. Ten race wins, seven in a row. And Jake. Zemke, we're going to his home track that he's got a lot of confidence at. Dangerous. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's tough. Like we said, he's riding this huge wave, wave of confidence right now, and you can see it You can see it in his body language, even off the bike. The, the guy is on fire right now, for sure. All right, well, J.D. Beach has kept his championship hopes alive. They're slim, Hannah, but they're alive. That's right. They're up, Greg's up in the booth saying, you kept your championship hope alive. There's still a chance. You were putting a lot of pressure on Garrett for, for a lot of the race there. It looked like maybe you started to lose the tire, a little feel in the rear there toward the end. Tell us about what happened. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a, real, a really good race. I mean, Garrett was riding real, uh, really strong again. Uh, but overnight, my, uh, my crew just, man, they improved my bike so much. I, I felt so good. And, uh, and, and I lost Garrett just a little bit, but I, but I wasn't worried. And I started, I, I was getting back on him, but I just got screwed by a, a lapper go, uh, going into turn one. And that kind of just set just set, uh, set the gap. And it was it was one second for so long. And I, it, it seemed like I'd gain on him a little bit and then lose a bit. And then, and then we, we just kind of in the lappers just spread out a little bit. But I mean, I, I think I pretty much kept the gap between one to three seconds the whole race. And uh, I mean, it was just... Um, amazing race and it was nice to finally battle with Garrett again and uh, I think if we could have been, uh, been there at the end without getting uh, held up by some lappers uh, I I had a plan going and uh, it, it, it was going well but uh, we'll just take it a barber and uh, try and try our best there thanks JD congrats all right well that's that's in a way, it's good news because it wasn't like, oh, we just couldn't get it to work towards the end of the race. Confidence is there. It just didn't go according to plan. Like I said, Greg, watching the race, JD looked comfortable back there. Yeah, yeah. He looked comfortable hanging the pace with Garrett. It was a very fast pace. You know, you look at their times, 22-0, 22-1. That's a half a second faster than they qualified at. So, you know, the pace was fast. and. <laughs> I think we're going to have a barn burner come Barber. I don't doubt it. I mean, I know J.D. kind of scoffed at that championship alive thing, and he knows reality. But the reality is, is that in third place is Valentin DeBees, and he has got a nice podium streak going on right now, Hannah. You definitely do have a nice podium streak going on. You're battling with Benny Solis for a lot of that race. He actually managed to get past you at one point. Tell us about how you passed him back and managed to leave him behind. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good battle and fun battle with Benny. I'm glad that uh, he improved and be able to, to fight with us now. Um, honestly, I'm not happy about my race. I didn't ride uh, as I should ride and um, I didn't make the job as I want today. So I need to, uh, to think about that and, uh, and try to, uh, to focus again on next week and don't make the same mistake as I did today and uh, ride as, uh, as I did yesterday, which was uh, better on my side. So, um, yeah, keep working and, uh, and uh, keep improving everything we can. I will try again and uh, I'm sure I, I can do way better. So I will, uh, I will keep going and, uh, and thanks to my team, they did a huge uh, job like always, always keep uh, pushing me. So uh, really happy to have this guy around me and uh, let's go. <laughs> Congratulations, thanks Valentin. All right, so in 16 races, Jake, he's had 12 podium appearances, but 
He, it's really the, those DNF finishes that he's had. He's had a, three of those on the season that have really kind of put him on his back foot and out of this championship. Yeah, for sure, Greg. I mean, it, the guys at the front are being so consistent. They're there every weekend. So, you know, one, one, even one DNF sometimes can ruin your whole season. You know, looking at the championship, or actually, it's the race results here. Garrett Gerloff, 3.6 seconds over J.D. Beach. Last weekend's race one at Pittsburgh, it was, what was it, 14 seconds, Four, Yeah, about 14 yeah, seconds. Yeah, so you can see how much he's closed the gap yeah. to Garrett. And that's a big deal. So Valentin DeBee is not racing the way he wants to. 20.9 seconds adrift. Benny Solis with a much better ride overall, 26 seconds. And then there was that Superstock 600 battle. Anthony Maziato, 3.8 seconds ahead of Nick McFadden. As we look through the list, Shane Richardson, he dropped back. We'll have to talk to him before Barber and find out what happened. A good little battle between Jody Berry, Mike Selby, uh, Daytona Anderson, and Lucas Silva on Super Sport motorcycles. And on back through the field, Brandon Cleland with a 19th place position. Again, in Moto America, we pay back to 15th. So in the overall Super Sport standings, even if you're on a Super Stock 600, we only pay points back to 15th. But some of these riders in the Super Stock 600 that are back here, 18, 19, 20, they'll score points in their class as well, back to 15th place. All right, so let's take a look at these championship standings for Super Sport. And you can see Garrett. There's only 50 points left in the championship for the next two races. So if Garrett had had 50 or more, he would have wrapped it up today. He wanted to. If J.D. Beach was beaten by Valentin DeBees, that was the story, but it's not. So J.D. Beach still has a bit of a pulse in this championship. It's going to be really difficult. I mean, it was the way Garrett Gerloff's riding his home track, I mean, it's not a foregone conclusion, but it's pretty darn close. Here's a look at the Motul podium with our winner, Garrett Gerloff. Yeah, looking at those points, Greg, you know, Garrett only needs to score four points at Barber, which tells me mm. he doesn't have to hold back. He can just go for it. Oh, is that right? Well, he hasn't really been holding back much at all, for sure. But if he goes to championship mode, we'll see. We'll take a break on being on the other side more. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Welcome back to New Jersey Motorsports Park. Super Sport, Super Stock 600 battle is over. So that'll do it for them here at NJMP. But we still have round 10 going on. And there were some great battles on the track. We talked about Garrett Gerloff winning over J.D. Beach by 3.6 seconds. And in the Super Stock 600 class, the winner of that class finished fifth overall. And he walks away with the second win of the season. It's Anthony Maziato with Anna. You know, Anthony, I'm pretty sure I've seen these sunglasses before. I know I know Tony Lewis has been winning a lot of races. Are, are you using those as maybe a good luck charm? Uh, you know, it's just these ones are called Pit Viper, so it's just a little bit different. But, yeah, for sure, these things are really helping me get where I'm going. And when I get up here on the box, which is awesome, I can actually see where I'm going because the sun's not in my eyes. But, yeah, that race was awesome. You know, uh, yesterday's setup was a little off going into the race. And I can't thank Mark about race bikes enough and John from Olin's for helping me get my bike set up and being able to put it on top of the box this weekend. In all seriousness, second race win for you this season. Tell us about your battle a little bit, how you got here. Uh, you know, I've been training a lot, and um, we did have a big off break because kind of ran out of money going out into the West Coast round, so we weren't able to make it. But, you know, I knew coming into these rounds I'm going to have to be the in the best shape I could possibly be because I need to really make a showing at the end of the year and show I still got it. So, All right, congratulations. Thanks, Anthony. Joey still got it. He still got it. No question about it. Finishing fifth overall and winning his second Super Stock 600. And by the way, this is only his first season on a 600, and he can't even do the full season like you talked about, Jake. Yeah, you know, it, it's really great. It's great to see the progression. Like you said, coming from an RC390 Cup bike last year to winning Super Stock races this year, that's a big <laughs> step. That's a big step, you know, and so congratulations to Anthony Maziato. All right. Moto America on BN Sports was presented by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires. The only motorcycle tires designed, tested, and made in America for how you ride. And powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll.